Here we're going to look at a nice little geometry problem from the Italian Mathematical Olympiad. So this is from the year 2001 and it is question one. So the statement goes like this. A hexagon has all congruent interior angles and consecutive sides of length 5, 3, 6, 7. And then our goal is to find the length of the remaining two sides. So I'm going to give you guys some hints to try the problem out a little bit before we look at a full solution. So the first hint is what is the angle sum for a hexagon? So there's a standard formula that you should keep in mind whenever you're working on geometry problems involving polygons on these kind of competitions. And there's a formula that allows you to write down the sum of the interior angles of an n-gon in terms of n. And here we know all those angles have equal angle measure, so that's gonna be super helpful. And then my next hint is to think outside the hexagon. So whenever you're working on these types of geometry problems, you often want to construct extra points from the ones given to you in the problems. And you can do that outside of the figure or inside of the figure or both. So I think it'll be most useful in this case to construct some points outside of this hexagon. Okay, so give the problem a go with these two hints and then we're going to come back with the solution. Okay, so hopefully those hints were helpful. Now we're ready to look for a solution. So I've gone ahead and drawn a picture. So notice I've got this hexagon with vertices A, B, C, D, E, F, and then I've made my side lengths five, three, six, seven. So those are the lengths given in the order given, and then Y, X. And then furthermore, we know that all of these angles are congruent. So I'll just go ahead and draw these orange things to show that all of those angles are congruent. And then another thing that we know is that the angle sum for a hexagon is 720 degrees. So again, this kind of formula for the angle sum of an n-gon is something that you should keep in mind for any of these geometry type problems. And for a hexagon, it's 720 degrees. But the fact that each of these angles is congruent tells us that each of these angles has angle measure 720 divided by six. So let's maybe go ahead and write that down. So each angle has measure 720 divided by six, but that's equal to 120 degrees. So we can maybe go ahead and add that in here. We know that each of these angles is 120 degrees. Good, and that's actually gonna be helpful. Now we're gonna use our second hint, which was to think outside of this hexagon. In other words, we're going to put some points outside the hexagon that will be useful as we move forward. And the points that we're gonna look at are the intersections of two lines built off of sides from the hexagon. So we're gonna take this line segment FA and extend it in the A direction. We're gonna take this line segment CB and extend it in the B direction. And maybe we'll call this point right here X. Great. Now we're gonna do the same kind of thing all over this picture. Um, maybe in this direction as well. So we'll extend BC in the C direction. And here we'll ex extend ED in the D direction. Let's go ahead and call this uh, vertex Y. Then we'll do the same thing up here. So here we'll extend this and we'll extend this. Maybe we'll call this uh, new intersection point Z. Great. Now, here's a really important thing. Notice that the angle ABX is supplementary to the angle ABC because that makes a straight line. So this is 120, so that's gonna make this equal to 60 degrees. Good. But we could say the same thing about angle FAB and angle BAX. Those are supplementary, which makes this 60 degrees, which also makes this 60 degrees. By the sum, angle of a triangle is 180 degrees. So what that means is that this triangle right here is equilateral. But if that triangle right there is equilateral and it has this side length of five, then it has this side length and this side length of five. Now we can play the same game over here. 
So notice that angle B, C, D and angle D, C, Y are supplementary. This is 120, so that makes that 60. That's gonna make that 60, kind of playing the same game over on that side. That's gonna make this 60 as well. Again, by the angle sum for a triangle. We know this side length is six, but that's gonna make um, this these last two side lengths also six. So I'll go ahead and write a six there and a six there. Okay, fantastic. But now the same kind of thing works exactly up in this new triangle up here, F, Z, E, but it has side length Y, which is unknown, but that means here we've got two side lengths Y. Okay, fantastic. Now we want to move to look at the large enveloping triangle. So notice here we've got this large enveloping triangle around the whole thing, triangle X, Y, Z. And we know that each of these corner angles is 60 degrees from what we determined earlier. So what that tells us is that triangle X, Y, Z is equilateral. But now that's gonna give us a system of equations um, corresponding to the side length. So if it's equilateral, then all the side lengths are the same. So x, side length x, y has to be equal to side length x, z, and side length x, y has to be equal to side length y, z. But now we can calculate these side lengths um, just by addition. So notice x, y has side length, uh, five plus three plus six, so that's gonna be equal to 14. So this is gonna be 14 over here. But then x, z has side length five, x, and y, so we can write that as x plus y plus five. And then again, x, y has side length 14, but um, y, z has side length uh, six, seven, and y, so that's gonna be 13 plus y. 13 plus y, great. But now we've got two very simple equations that we can use to solve for x and y. So notice this one that I've underlined in purple tells us immediately that y is equal to one, good. And now this one that I'm underlining up here will tell us that x plus one plus five or x plus six equals 14, which is the same thing as x being equal to eight. And that finishes our problem. And that's a good place to stop.